Now, let me show you the trick here because you will be able to do this very quickly and maybe even in your head. So as you can see, what ends up happening is when the client comes to you and says, okay, I want you to list my property, Raymond, and I need to just pay the loan off. I need to net $250,000 in this example. Now I use the word net because it is a net calculation is calculated the same way. All right. I need to pay my first lien off of $250,000. Can you help me? And you go, sure. I know in my expertise that the closing costs for that deal are going to be $2,000. And Raymond is going to allow me to help you out. So we are only going to charge a 5% commission to help you out. Now, here's the easy trick. If I get 5%, how much does the seller get? 95%, right? If I get 10%, how much would the seller get? 90%. If I charge 1%, how much would the seller get? 99%. You only need this number here to understand what this number is, because this number is the percentage of X. So it's very simple to say, hey, if Raymond is going to make me charge 5%, then the seller is getting 95% because I get five. And we know that that has to equal all of the bills that she owes. How much does she owe in bills? She owes $252,000, $252,000, and we got that by simply just adding these two together. And if you go to your handy-dandy calculator and go, hey, Siri, what's $252,000 divided by 0.95? 265,263 and 16 cents. Ta-da! That is the minimum list price that you can accept on that house and pay the real estate commission of 5%, pay the closing costs of 2,000 and pay off the first lien of 250. It literally is that simple. Now, future or further knowledge. This number right here, you could play that game all day because that number only comes from a simple addition. Let's change the story because you know I like to do that. And let's say she says, look, I owe 250000 And you say, well, you've got 2000 in closing cost. And then she says, but... I'd like to walk away with $2,000 in my pocket so I can use it as a deposit on an apartment so I can live somewhere. And you go, okay, we can do that. So now what you have is that amount of money the buyer has to bring has to bring all of that. So now over here, she's still getting 95% but it now has to equal $254,000. And you pull out your calculator and you go, hey, Siri, what is $254,000 minus... Or, Siri, stop. <laughs> it also helps to know what you're doing when you do this. Hey, Siri, what is $254,000 divided by 0.95? $267,368.42. That would be the diff that would be the new price that would pay the 5% real estate commission. It would pay the closing costs of 2000. It would pay off her first lien 
of 250 and it would allow her $2,000 to walk away. So literally, you can play this game to get this number all day. All you have to continually do is add more numbers. Well, I want to pay my car off. I want to walk away with a million dollars. I want to give my kid 20000 And all you do is just add those numbers up and do the math, and you come up with a listing number or the final number that would be. Cool? But understand that this number still has to be in the range of realistic is the best word. I could say mathematically, oh, she wants to walk away with an extra million and make that a million 254,000 and you end up with some million $267,000 listing price because math does not care about other things, only the numerical value. So you say, oh yeah, we could, we could do all of that. All we have to do is sell your house for 1.26 million and we're fine. But the appraisal is only going to come in at 270,000. It's not a $1.26 million house. So while you can play this math all day, and mathematically get a number, that number better be realistic in the form of, is the house really going to appraise for that number? Is the house really worth 1.267 million? The answer is no. So while you could play this math game and now add these numbers, day, just add them up, You've got to inform your client, dude, that's not realistic. We're not going to be able to sell your house for uh, pay off your $250,000 loan and let you walk away with $45,000 because the house will not appraise for three hundred grand. All of the comps, and I know we haven't got to it yet, so trust me, all of the comps show the highest house in here is two hundred and seventy-five. dollars You're not going to sell for three hundred. dollars So your number of $40,000 that you want... Is not realistic. Can't do it. All right. So this is a common math problem because you will get it all the time when someone says, look, I just want to pay my loan off. I want to get out of trouble. I want to move on, whatever. And this math you will get to do. I would suggest that you practice this and understand the key components right here. Right? Because this number, this 0.95, comes from whatever the commission is. If the commission was 3%, then it would be 0.97x, okay? And there are several math problems on the, my exam. There are several uh, math problems on your state exam that are going to ask this question. And it is a very common question, all right? So that is calculated like a net listing the only difference is the client's going to go, oh, I want to net 100 grand. All right. So that's a net listing. Now, we have bantered this word back and forth before. So let's get to this thing called the MLS system, the multiple listing service. The MLS system is nothing more than a database of properties. So let me clear this out. The MLS system is nothing more than a database of properties that's supposed to be a computer. So that when you list a house, you will then go and record all of the pertinent data that your MLS system requires. Number of beds, number of baths, square footage, how big's the yard, you know, how many square feet or acres, does it have a basement, how, uh, all of that stuff. And then you, as the listing agent, put that into the MLS system for other brokers to see. Now, each MLS system is proprietary to a local board that you belong to. 
So I've got to step over here and go back and make sure we emphasize. We talked about this thing earlier called the NAR, the National Association of Realtors. It's the governing body. Remember, they own the word Realtor, and you have to be a member of the NAR to actually use the word Realtor with your name. So in that member or in that membership of the NAR are different states. And this is an example. You know, you've got the Indiana Association of Realtors. They all roll up to the national. You've got the Florida Association. You've got the Virginia Association. They all flow up so that the NAR has every state plus Puerto Rico and I think some of Canada as a member. And then in each individual state... There are local boards, depending on what state you're in, depends on how many they are and what they call them. So for an example, you've got the Greater Northern Indiana Association of Realtors. That is the north portion of Indiana. You've got the Miami Board Association of Realtors. You've got the one for Indianapolis, which is called MyBOR, which stands for, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, they've changed the name three times, I, I'm not sure. Used to sta stand for Middle Indiana Board of Realtors, and then it was uh, the Metropolitan, in, you know, it was originally the Metropolitan Indianapolis Board of Realtors, and then they expanded out, and now it's called Middle Indiana Board of Realtors. So in Indiana, example, we have like 22 boards. Uh, other states have different number of boards. Each board has their own MLS system. And if you think back to what we talked about when we were talking about that open listing and I said you couldn't put it in the same board. If there were two agents in my board, for example, once one of them listed it into the MLS, a second agent in my board could not do that because that MLS system would say, hey, it's already listed. But a person in GNAR could listen, list it. The Bloomington Board of Realtors. That is a different MLS. This is why that open listing kind of works. Because you could have one agent inside of my board listed, one agent inside of Bloomington listed, one agent inside of GNR listed, so that it gets the maximum exposure. All right? And if you are not a member of that board the Miami Board of Realtors. If you are not a member of that board, you cannot see their MLS. You would have to join, and you can join as many of these as you choose, all right? So now, let's go back to this. <clears throat> when you list the property, you would put it in your uh, Board of Realtors, I'm going to go back over here and make it a cleaner one. So here's the MLS system. That's a database. That's the uh, computer programmer symbol for database, which is, I can't spell either. Data base. It's called the MLS system. You list it, you put all the pertinent data into it, and then what happens is, you have a buyer over here that hires a buyer's agent, a buyer's agent, who would be called the selling agent for us. They go out and they look at the MLS system and they try and find a property that is closely associated with whatever statistics this buyer gave. 
Oh, I want a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot, one acre house. So that buyer's agent would search their MLS and come up with three properties. This is the MLS sheets. So he's got three properties. And these three properties, he would say, hey, Mr. Buyer, here's three of them. Let's go look at the property. And then they go look at these properties. And let's say they decide they like one and they like your listing. So they make an offer to you. And now that offer gets accepted by your seller. First thing is, I've now earned my commission. Remember, once the deal's formed, I've done a brokerage, bringing buyers and sellers together. I've earned my commission. The second the seller accepts that offer, the deal becomes formed. I've earned my commission because that's what I was hired to do. And now you and I, me as the listing agent, you as the selling agent, you will awful, often hear it's called cooperating brokers. Because we are supposed to cooperate with each other to drag these two people across the finish line that we call a closing. That is how the MLS system works. It is a database of properties that allows for you to search to find your clients' properties that match everything they do.